on the Mexican border that far away, half a mile to the U.S.-Mexican border. But we're on our way to meet a gentleman who's older and has decided to let his collection go to somebody that can appreciate it. Uh, cars that he's had for a long time. So, so we're gonna go over and see what this gentleman has. This is exciting. All right, well, we're going to follow Joe into these uh, well, sheds here. This is, a, I should have, I thought I noticed this, I would have cleaned everything out. This is a Volvo station wagon, handmade. Oh, look at that. No kidding. So it's a station wagon cut to a truck. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. I like this. Wow. It, uh, it's you a, made that? Yes, we made it. It used to be a station wagon. It was hit in the back yeah. and we fixed it. And this, uh, gee, this is going to be a tough one here. This is a 51 uh, Pontiac uh, Packard, it's a 51 Packard. Wow, what a big car, look at that door. Jeez. Now, how long have you had this Packard? We've had it about uh, 15 years. Did you drive it? Yes, I did. I and did did you, you painted it, you restored it? Uh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. I bought it at an auction and it was all brought it out and we fixed it up, everything completely. And I have this one and another one for spare parts. I have two Packards. Two 51s? Yes. So it runs well? This one, yes, they, they, this one runs well last time. And it's got a straight, on it. yes. straight eight? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. straight eight. flat head eight. It, it's complete. So you're, so you're selling these cars? Yes, they're all, they're all, they're all for sale. They're, wow, do you have prices I'll, I'll, I'll give, uh, yes. How much would you ask for this? Uh, uh, I, I give two for $7,000. This plus the parts car yes. for seven grand. And, it, and this is a running car? This was a running car when I drove it in. Which is how long ago? Oh, about seven or eight years ago. Okay. But Two for seven I'm, grand. That's a deal. Yeah. So you're a lifelong car enthusiast? Well, maybe for a while, actually. Yeah. <laughs> now here I have a I have a, a 2002 Dodge truck Ooh. that that we made into an El Camino. <laughs> well, yeah. you like converting things. Yes. See, this is the only one. Oh, look at that. So how'd you do that? That was, was that a four door? It, it was a, a king cab, and it was rolled. So we we, we put a regular cab on it, and then. Combined it with and you fabricated this? Yes. Ooh. Boy, that looks sharp. Wow. It's the only one in the world. <laughs> so it's, it's the longest. Yeah, it has a real long bed. Yes, now. it does, man. <laughs> you can put everything on it. That's got to be eight, nine feet long. Wow. Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, it's so you're selling these as well? Yeah, they're, everything's for sale. Well, somebody might watch, you know, watch this video and fall in love with that. Oh, okay. Okay, back here, I have a 1939 Buick that's been restored. So what, what would you ask for this one? Oh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about twelve, maybe. Twelve thousand, yeah. And all so, right, that's interesting. And it's and the body's all uh, taken care of. Yep. So the body, the, are you a body man? Because I mean that work yes, you did yes, there. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay, that work you did there was pretty darn nice. And here's that 1930 Plymouth. And you restored this car? No, this one was uh, was bought pretty much the same way. I bought this of a, of a collector in San Diego. It says, "Where's the safe? 12, 1697. Is that is that when it was last run? Run." All right, so I guess you parked it then, huh? New oil remember. pump in 2000. Yeah, we, 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 we repaired the engine. He, he, this was a, it's featured in a, a Hemings. In Hemings. Oh, yeah. right on the cover. Yeah. Oh, that's a convertible. Yeah, that's the okay. only difference, yep. yeah. Yep. Hmm. The same car. <laughs> no kidding. It has little, little uh, plaques here with some previous awards here. And this is a 31. Six cylinder? Uh, four, I believe. Four cylinder, really? Hmm. I'm not a... Plymouth guy, so I don't know. And here's a, uh, a Mercedes pickup that we made. This is your thing, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what'd you use here as a back window? That was a Ford uh, uh, uh -huh. window. The tailgate was half of a Mercedes. We, we made a tailgate on it. And this is from a, a restaurant. <laughs> That's a pretty sharp. And it yeah. runs very well. It's, it's a is diesel. It diesel. It's a diesel. What, do you, what would you ask for that? I don't know. Offer. The what? only one in the world. And this is that other... Uh, uh, okay, that's the Packard parts car. Uh, park, parts car. And here I have a, a 56 Buick. Mm -hmm. so, it's a V8. Uh, yes. So yes. there's a nail head, the vertical valves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Was this a driver as well? Yes, yes, it was a driver. But I want to show you something up here. All right, how do you know this is a 56 Buick? For a couple of years, Buick... And besides that, it's written there. It's written 1956. 1956. Yeah. No denying that. <laughs> right. 
So when you get rid of these cars, what are you going to do to all the space? Well, I'll worry about that when I have it. <laughs> <laughs> so this parts car is... is uh, yeah, is it, this has a pretty good engine in it and transmission we're in. And this could be restored, but it'll take quite a bit. Yeah, okay. This is the parts car to the other package we saw earlier. And this could be restored. I mean, if you look at this, it's massive. But this car clearly has some little rust bubbles going out here and there. So he's going to throw this Packard in with the first Packard we saw back there, the red one. And the two were seven grand. That's like a no-brainer. I mean, I don't know. You could probably get half that money back just for this parts car and wind up owning that running Packard for 3500 bucks. So that's, uh, that's a good deal. Okay, here we have a, a 1948 Chrysler. Oh, yeah. Boy, These were them. used as taxi cabs in Los Angeles and New York. Oh, Does yes. that have a fluid drive? Oh, it's a manual gearbox. No, it's a fluid. Oh. Okay, it's fluid. Fluid, fluid drive. It has a clutch, but you don't have to use, use it in it. first gear. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's mm -hmm. right. This is a 1948 Chrysler New Yorker. And I'm not a big old Mopar fan of these cars, but uh, boy, they have a presence. And I guess the reason I'm not a big fan of them is that they have, you know, a, a slush o matic transmission. It's kind of a fluid drive type thing. It's got a clutch, but the clutch is only used to go in reverse or first gear, the rest of it you can just shift on its own. So you could never burn rubber in a car like this. But as far as having a smooth ride, uh, this would be it. It's, it's like a limousine or a taxi cab. It's got suicide doors in the back. If you look at this hood, I bet this hood is more than six feet long. I mean, let's, let's pace it out. I'll go from here. One, two, three, four, five. That's a six foot hood. Um, the engine, is right here. It's a, it's a flathead six. So the radiator is, is back here. Look at the size of that hood, man. So it's a flathead six cylinder. I bet it runs smooth as glass, but not a lot of power. But all that being said, this seems to have a nice paint job under it. And you know, a couple of hours with a sponge and a soapy pail of water and a hose and you could really have this thing looking really sweet. Now here, I have a 53 Oldsmobile. Did you paint it? Uh, I mean, you had yeah, it painted? No, we, 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 we painted it, it was the same color. Oh, okay. We painted it about 20 years ago. Oh, so it's, a, it's an Olds 88? Yes. It's got a V8, Rocket 88? Right. Now that's a, what body style is that? It's a two-door sedan? It's, oh, it's a four-door. Four four-door, yeah. Four-door, okay. And that's an automatic in there? Oh, yes. yes yeah, okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, how much is that one? Take about 10 on this one. 10 grand. And that was a driver, a runner driver, yep. when was, parked. Okay. Right. All these cars in here were running and driving when I parked them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here is a 30 Chevrolet. A 30 Chevy. So that had a straight six overhead valve, I guess. Mm -hmm. We have instructions on there how to start it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, think parts, I guess parts you need. Right, and uh, the maintenance we've done. So you did the interior, you did the paint? No, no, it was, it was, uh, it was I, didn't, I didn't paint this or the interior. The Why, person you bought had, it like this? Yes. Hmm. We did do mechanical work to it. The brakes and uh, it had a bent valve. I, I rebuilt the head and uh, we did the brakes. These are mechanical brakes, they're right. not fluid. So it take quite a bit of pressure to stop them. But, so brown fenders, orange wheels, and yellow body. That's yeah, a, that's and the And it's got the orange pinstripe up yeah. here. Let's see what motor it's got. Yeah, it's an overhead valve six. So if you think about, you know, Ford in 1930 had a, a four-cylinder flathead L-head motor in the Model A. How much more advanced Chevrolet was at the same time? And right. Edsel Ford wanted his father to start modernizing the, the mechanics of their, of their cars, and Henry didn't want to hear it. These cars are good enough. They're going to stay the way they are. And so it was a, it was a constant headbang between Edsel Ford and Henry Ford. Um, and ultimately, two years after this, 1932, Ford came out with a flathead V8. Oh, yeah. Here's a 64 Ford original. This was a driver. Uh-huh. Belonged with to Chevy my... Chevy hubcaps. <laughs> my, uh, it belonged to my tenant. He, he died and he left it. He left it here about six months ago. Yeah. Is, it, is it, what, a 289 or a 352? Uh, 289. Well, this thing is solid. Yeah, it is. It's a good well, Let's clunk this door here. A nice... Seam going on there. Wow. Must be low mileage or something. <laughs> it says 46,000 miles. Original owner. Hmm? 46,000. Could that be original? I don't know. Huh. I don't think so, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to go, used to, go to work with it every so often. So he drove it, yeah? Oh, yes, hmm. yes, he drove it. 
Are, if you, when you sell all these cars, are you going to buy one old car for yourself again? Or? Oh, I don't know. I yeah. wonder how's the problem when I think about it. I, yeah. really, I don't drive too much anymore. I'm getting too old now. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Well, you sure have a lot of cars for not driving. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the trouble. That's the trouble. We just finished looking at Joe's cars. A friend of Joe's is here, and he says, I know where there's some cars up the road. And uh, maybe we can go up there. There's a yard where people rent out space to store their cars. So it sounds to me that it could be interesting. So let's take a look what's up there. Ismael? Ismael. Yeah. Ismael. Nice to meet you. Tom Cotter. A bunch of old projects here that... All right. No big dogs in here? Oh, no. Only I'm me. I'm always afraid of that. Only me. Okay. <laughs> this is another project that I was working on, this El Camino. It's kind of a, a rare one. Is it? Yeah, it, uh, it's got bucket seats, uh, the console. Oh. And then one time they ordered it with uh, everything on it. They had cruise control and everything for a 78. Had the engine rebuilt and the transmission rebuilt. Is that 305 in there? No, it's a 350. 350, okay. And uh, So do you, do you drive this? Yeah, every now and then it's registered and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is your Roadrunner. So 69 Roadrunner, is it automatic? It, it was a four-speed. Four-speed 383. Yeah, and the guy that had it <coughs> converted it to uh, automatic. Because it's, uh, the guy that, was, uh, that had it was running it with a 5,000 stall with 513 gears in the rear. It's old school, tubbed. So this is a 69 Roadrunner. It was a drag car. It had a 383 and a four-speed from the factory. You don't have an engine for it now. No, uh, the guy that had it uh, converted it to a 440. Okay, and, ha and an automatic. An automatic. And you have a grill, the bumper. Oh yeah, I have oh, everything. Everything, okay. Huh. Do you have any idea what you'd want for this? Well, I'll tell you how much I'm into it uh, right now. It's about 13. 13, so what would you want to get out of it? That much? Yeah, or better. Like 15? Yeah, about 15. Is that a, is that a Shelby? Uh, that one is uh, GLH. GLH, okay, I Omni know all GLH. about these. You know what GLH stands for, I right? know exactly what it stands for. This this was a little hot rod that I wanted to buy a new one in like 1986 or 87. Yeah. This is a, a Dodge Omni GLH, and the GLH stands for Go Like Hell. <laughs> and it's right down here, GLH Turbo. This yeah. was built during the days when Volkswagen Rabbit GTIs were the hot little econo box. So Chrysler came up with their own version of it, and they made a very powerful four-cylinder motor it had a lot of torque steer though. When you nail that throttle, it steered where it wanted to go, independent of where you aim the steering wheel. But Carroll Shelby designed and, and built these uh, for, for, you know, he designed them for Chrysler Corporation, built the prototypes, and then Chrysler made them beyond that. You don't, you, don't, you don't see these? No. You know, this was running when I parked it. So we have fuel injected, turbocharged, overhead cam, four cylinder, and I forget what the horsepower was, but it was a little rocket. But it was more of a straight line car this, uh, than it was a handling car. This was one of the fastest production cars when they came out. Yeah. It was running, uh, what, under 12 seconds? Oh, yeah, quarter. it was amazing. So you can see these wheels. These were the, the, the GLH wheels. They were, in the day, this was a tall t wheel. It's 15 inch, so it's 185, 50, 15 alloy rim, five bolts. Uh, they were low profile. I mean, that was a low profile, and that was a tall tire back in the day. But, but looking at the way this rust is up here, it, you would be better off buying this and buying a cleaner body and put those, these components on another Dodge Omni because this is this is severe rust. That's too bad. But it's got you know the right seats, got the right steering wheel, you know all the other. It looks to be a very complete car. So I see two MG midgets here. Uh, so they're pre '74 because they they have the small bumper guards. That looks like a parts car, but that looks like a pretty nice one. So so these had a. Uh, 1275 engines, uh, but these are great little cars. I had one for many years, and, and great little car. The problem I have is that my legs are just too long to have an MG Midget, so an MGB, the bigger brother of this for me, is a better option, but this looks like a nice clean car. It looks like a good body. Hmm, nice. Some of you may have seen an earlier episode where I, I was driving a car that I actually found on this program a couple years ago, a, a 67 Ford Country Squire station wagon with a 428 and a four-speed factory floor shift like 
in a wagon, a four-speed, bucket seats in a console. Well, this is not that car. This is a 1970 Ford. It's not a Country Squire. I'm not sure what model it is, but it's a wagon. Small hubcaps. Similar, similar nose, but exactly the same size. No, probably a 302. It's got power steering, manual brakes, no air, and a fair amount of rust. So this, this car would require a fair amount of rust. But one th unusual thing about this car, which will get your attention, is that it's a factory manual gearbox. Originally it had a three on the column and it broke. So now it's got a uh, hearse shifter on the floor, three on the floor, original clutch pedal. So these wagons are unusual uh, to begin with because most of them have rusted away. This one's trying to do that. The floor shift's not original, but it would be on the column. I mean, if you look at the dashboard on here, it's pretty unusual. The radio is way over here on the left side. You couldn't have your kids on the right side or your wife reach over and fool around with the radio dial because it's way over here and only you can correct that. So uh, Ismail said he would sell this. I'm not sure what it would go for, but you'd have to be a pretty good fabricator because it's got a fair amount of cancer back in this area here. Probably as a result of dirt and, and water and stuff being thrown up, up into here, there's probably cracks and crevices because they didn't care about rust control back when they built these cars. They just, they built them. They realized people sell cars every five or six years. It's got the two-way tailgate, one that opens like a door and then opens down like a traditional tailgate. Roof rack, it's got the, the traditional hubcaps on there. This could be bought for probably not a lot of money, but only the brave need apply. Well, thank you, sir, for your time. Oh, we're, sure. we're, we really appreciate it. And uh, this, it's been a good day for us. Yeah. Would walk mm -hmm. in and, uh, is this your stuff here as well? Uh, the properties and mine are rent back here. The Volkswagen? Yeah, that belongs to the uh, owner of the property. Oh, okay.